finish up our discussion of DNA for now. We'll be coming back to this quite a bit. We need to talk about the concept of mutation. You may have heard of mutation. Most of you would think of a mutation as uh, maybe a dog being born with uh, uh, two heads or a frog having five legs. Well, those are indeed mutations. However, uh, those are what we call gross mutations. And gross being large mutations. And sometimes those are more than just a DNA mutation, as we'll see. Let's talk about some basic kinds of mutation, and then later on we talk about human biology, and we talk about human genetics and other organism genetics. We can talk about this again. A mutation is a change in the DNA that makes it different from the original strand. What we are talking about here is when the DNA, if this is the original DNA strand up here, When the DNA is copied, it becomes different. Copying mistakes. Generally, generally, not always, copying mistakes. And I'll give you a couple examples of these in a minute. So, Here's the thing with a mutation. If the change in the DNA leads to the making of a different protein or no protein, it may create a change in the organism. Let me show you with uh, our sentence we used in the last video we talked, we had a sentence, the fat cat ate the big rat in our last PowerPoint. Let's take a look at the exact same sentence again. Here's this top sentence, the fat cat ate the big rat. We divide it into threes. Whoa. We divide it into sets of three to read the fat cat ate the big rat. But well, let's say you were copying this down fast and you made a mistake and maybe you can see where the mistake is. The mistake is right here. The F didn't get copied. So if we divide this into thirds, we get the ek ada tet heb iger ek. doesn't mean anything. This is no longer a sentence we can read. Or, another mistake is maybe you got distracted and you accidentally copied down an extra F. When we divide it into threes, we get the same problem. The is correct. FFA. There you go for those of you that are future farmers. Tat, F, Ebe, Gra. Another mutation is one where instead of an F, you misread it and you put in an E. Now, oh, oops, I typed the wrong letter. That should be a C. I did it twice. The eat, or in here we put in a C, a B, and instead of a C, the eat, bat, ate the big rat, which doesn't really make any sense because eat is not an adjective. So, eat is a verb. So, we have a meaningless sentence again. Okay? Now, if you can picture these same things being done to DNA, you can take out a letter, you can add an extra letter, or you can substitute a different letter. Those are all different kinds of mutations. Quick example. The summer you spent time, or the spring, you're going to go to a tanning booth, maybe, some of you. And you're going to lay in the tanning booth, and those ultraviolet rays are going to shine down in your skin. Okay, and true, they do a pretty good job of making your skin darker. The other thing they do is in any cells in your skin, not in any, but in some of the cells in your skin that are dividing, and your skin has cells that divide a lot, that UV light causes this to happen. 
let's say this is your code and your cells are copying it. For some reason, we don't know why, UV light causes what we call thymine dimerization. Causes you to put in an extra T. We don't know why. And if that happens in the wrong gene, in fact, in your skin and other cells, you have genes that prevent cancer from happening, you'll get those genes don't prevent cancer, and that can lead to a condition we've all heard of if you get too much sun, skin cancer. Now, probably not going to happen to you at 15, 14 years old, but it takes time. And the combined effects over time, the more times you're in the tanning booth, the greater the, or out in the sun, the greater the chances that that happens. Interestingly, recessive genes are considered to be the result of mutations in the original genes. Especially recessive genes that cause diseases. We'll talk more about mutations in class.